So the Mount Philo Commune in Charlotte, Vermont, had begun an informal network of uh, draft counselors, a group of really caring people, some church affiliated, some not, and helped people figure out how to defer, basically. And some became conscientious objectors. They had to serve a certain amount of time in, a, in an institution. The ones that lived at Philo worked at the hospital. And others would exhaust every every single path to, to avoid the draft and then eventually would go to Canada. We were part of the Underground Railroad. We did what we could to help people get across the border. And also we helped people develop other um, identities who wanted to uh, stay in this country. We went to town halls, city halls, um, to find birth certificates of people who were no longer alive. Um, basically who died when they were babies or infants and using those uh, identities for uh, people to um, take on. I was pissed. I was, uh, I was angry. But I, I, I kept that in for a long time. Our old Vermont Senator, Aiken, he, he proposed one time just uh, declaring victory and getting the hell out. And that was probably the wisest uh, attitude because we could have saved uh, millions of lives. Four million Vietnamese, uh, two million Cambodians, uh, half a million Laotians. The Vietnamese I'd like to talk to and hope would be all right with the people that work with us, people who risk their fortune and life on supporting us or working with us. Most of it probably out of circumstance, but uh, I felt pretty uh, helpless with, with what happened to them afterwards. I can't imagine the difficulties they had. hard. I, I, I never tried to pretend that it was an easy decision or the decision of the guys who decided to go was easy. It wasn't easy for anyone. Yet. And uh, I, I went into the Army for a time and then uh, left at Christmas leave in 1969 and came to Canada eventually. The hardest part to, for me and the whole thing was the conversation when I had to tell my mother that I was going. I remember I, I called her from Seattle the night before I went and I think I I think I just said, Mom, I, I decided I'm going to Canada. And, you know, I kind of heard her voice catch, and I could feel her kind of gathering herself. And then she said, well, if that's what you feel you should do, I would rather have you there than in Vietnam. And uh, I didn't want to talk to my father. I said, can you tell him for me? And she said, OK. And I didn't actually find out until years later that for months after that, she would just lock herself in the bathroom for hours. And this was a very busy, hardworking woman who had raised a whole mess of kids, and uh, it just wasn't like her. I, I, and I never found out until, until after she passed away that how hard it had hit her after I came to Canada. <laughs>